Hello and welcome to another episode of Web Learning, where knowledge is shared. Lately, I've been to the ST Blue Energy Dash One training, and I'm sharing my knowledge today with you. So to start off, all the information that you need for this training can be found on the ST website. You just go to st.com, write in the search box Blue Energy Dash One, then you can find the chip, the DK, the evaluation tool software, and the evaluation board that I'll be using. There's another tool that needs to be downloaded, and that's the Blue Energy GUI. But that I'll do in a different video. All the links can be found in the below description. The Blue Energy Dish 1 is a low power Bluetooth low energy device. It can operate from 1.7 to 3.6, and the user can write his own code. The device has a programmable 160 kbit flash. From it, the user can write about 100 k. This depends on how many profiles uh, the user wants to load and what type of communication he needs to use. The device has also SRAM, UART, SPI, I2C, GPIOs, and all the other functions. The two type of uh, high-speed crystals can be used, 16 or 32 megahertz. This is a must. Usually a 16 is recommended because that's the default that the device is loading. But if you need to use a 32 megahertz, you can do that also. There is another crystal that can be connected, the 32 kilohertz, but this is not mandatory. If you use external crystal oscillator, the device will have a better power performance, but again, you don't have to use it and you have to use the internal ring os oscillator in order to wake up and sleep. The software package for the Blue Energy is the one that you see here, and you saw it at the beginning of the video. It has the Navigator PC application that you see here. It has a flasher utility, a Bluetooth Low Energy demonstration application, the CMSYS files, peripherals drivers, the SDK and HAL drivers, and the kit platform support. All this can be found in the original installation program. All this can be found in the original installation program under your local drive, program files, ST Microelectronics, Blue Energy, DK, and depending on the version that you're using. So you can see the application, the docs, the firmware, the library, the PC driver, the project and utility. This can be also accessible through the software. In the software itself, you have the demonstration application, the development kit, release notes, and license files. What we're interested in just the first two. In the development kits, as of today, there is only one development kit, and this is the one I have next to me. In this window, you can either hover the mouse over the connection, and you can see it highlighted on what is the connection, or you can hover over the wording and it will hi highlight the connection. The Blue Energy itself sits right at the front and as I said before it has a built-in microcontroller that the user can write his own code. It's a Cortex-M0 because it shares communication with the user so program. Usually it's recommended not to put heavy computational software and just use the Blue Energy 1 for general data retrieving, sending, um, beacon, and other things like that. The Blue Energy has on its right side the 16 megahertz uh, crystal oscillator, and on the left side there is the 32 kilohertz. Then you have the JTAC SWD connector. This is used to program the Blue Energy 1 directly. This board doesn't have an ST link and the external ST-Link has to be used. Again, the ST-Link has to be updated in order to recognize the Blue Energy 1, and this you can find in one of my videos on how to update the ST-Link. It also has two MEM sensors. One is a pressure sensor, and the other one is a accelerometer. And You have the SMA connector for the antenna, and you have a USB to UART. There are push buttons, one and two, and a reset button that can be also used to put the board in the DFU mode to update the firmware of the USB to UR device. In order, if you want to do that, you need to disconnect the power of the board, hold the reset button, connect the power to the board, and then you have the middle LED flashing red. This means that the board is in the DFU mode and you can program the, the board. On the demonstration application, you have basic examples for Blue Energy Hello World and a sleep test. You have BLE demonstration and test applications that I'll go through them in a minute. And you have peripheral driver examples 
where you can see how to use the SBI, I2C, UART, Watchdog, Realtime Clock, GPIO, ADC, and Sysdic. In the BL demonstration test application, you have a Beacon and Chat, Chatmaster and Slave, HID Perifer, Remote Control, and different other applications. The, the DTM needs to be used when you load the GUI, and the right software for this board is the UART 16 MHz. This will load the actual code that's needed in order for the GUI to communicate with the Blue Energy. So let's start with uh, one of the demos. We'll go to the BLE chat. And now we need to decide if we're the client or the server. Now, if you don't know anything about Bluetooth and uh, BLE, if the first thing that comes to your mind is probably to put the, on the board a client. Let me explain on the difference between a client and the server. So to understand how it works and how the different client-server um, naming is, let's take it the chat example. Now, as a rule of thumb, whoever has the information will be the server or the master. There are different namings at different companies and at different websites, but all of them are the same. So whoever has the information will be called the server or a master. Whoever will take the information, in this example, a mobile phone, will be the client or the slave. Again, different naming, but they are doing the same thing. And the way it works is this. The mobile phone will ask periodically, that could be between 20 milliseconds up to about 10 seconds. It will ask the server if it has any data. So the server will wake up after the negotiation with the mobile phone for the first time. It will know that they need to communicate. The mobile phone will ask, hey, do I have any data? The server will say probably no, most of the time. At the second time, if we have data, the client will again ask the server if there is any data. The server will say yes. The mobile phone will ask for the data. And the server will give the data in the, this example, like any character like ABC. This is a simple read. There's another way to send the data, and that's called notification. In this option, the client will ask the server, is there any data? And the server will say yes, and will immediately send the information. So coming back to our demo, we understand now that we'll need the server configuration because our board will have the information and the mobile phone will be the client. At this stage, the software is telling me that I don't have any board. I'll connect the board. And it recognizes the board under COM3. And I can go to the documents, to the projects, or I can flash and run. I click flash and run. Now, if you have any issues with loading the software, sometimes you, sometimes you can have an issue like right now with communication error on the board. One way is just disconnect the board, reconnect it. So it's loading now the code. If you need, uh, if you still still has those issues, you'll need to update the firmware. And this you do by uh, DFU, as I said, click on the reset button, connect the power, then you see the red flash, and then you need to use the software, you need the software GUI in order to update the board. But sometimes even though you flash the board, you'll still have these errors and you have to try a few times. So the program had had been loaded. It opened immediately a ser serial terminal so I can see the information. Now let's open the screen on my mobile phone. I'm using an Android and from the App Store you can download the BLE scanner. After you've opened the BLE scanner and the Blue Energy uh, chat demo is running, you can see the Blue Energy Dash 1 chat. I'll click connect. Then I can see generic attributes, generic access, and custom service. This again will be explained in a different video. We can see that we have notification, read, and write. 
So if we click right, and I'll click hello, and I'll click OK, and immediately we can see that it received hello. Now, if we'll try to write something here, one, two, three, I click enter, nothing happens in this window. Even if I click read, nothing happens, okay? Because there are some parameters that you need to set correctly in order for that to work. And for this demo, it doesn't. What we can do is click notification. And you can see notification is enabled. And this is what I showed before. So if I write 456 and enter, now we can see that there is 456. And if I'll click, for example, 1, 2, 3, enter, and immediately we'll see 1, 2, 3. So back to the Blue Energy Navigator, we'll go back. We'll try a different demo, the sensor demo, releases, and flash and run because the board is still connected. and on the mobile phone. There is a different app that you can find on the App Store. It's called Blue Energy. This is the Blue Energy demo from ST. And after it's been connected, I can move the board and the cube will move in the same way I move it. If I stop moving it, it will stabilize. And then there is the other maps and it's pressure plus temperature. If I raise the board, you can see that the middle bar changes. If I lower the board, you can see also the change. With our SSI, you can see how close the phone is. If I put it very, very close, and if I take it very far, you can see the differences. I hope you enjoyed this. Click uh, subscribe to get more notifications when I upload new videos. Thank you.